What's up everybody, welcome back to day number three. Looks like we are finally getting to the very end of this. I have been so excited and so thankful for this whole time to see my car during the process of when it first came in all messed up and now it's like a mirror. We're here, okay. just living it up. Um, <laughs> I can keep going. Just keep going, just keep going. Um, so basically, what city are we in? Uh, La Habra. Where are we at? We're at Austin's place. I'm not sure. <laughs> I honestly don't know if he has a name for this. But, uh, I just started following him, but insane. He's got some beautiful cars, so we're going to give you a tour right now. Are you about to do a tour with your camera? <laughs> yo, yo, chill, chill. We're not doing transitions yet. <laughs> are you about to do a tour with your camera? Yeah. We are going to show you guys right now the process of how to coat the car. Austin actually went through the whole day today, um, starting at 10 a.m. It's currently around 5. He already polished the entire car, which Compounding and polishing is different, but he'll explain that on the video. So let's just go show you the car right now. So I just drove Spencer over to um, Austin's shop, and he does a lot of detailing. So they're circling around me um, like a shark, maybe. <laughs> The coating, once the car has been corrected and, and prepped, basically put the ceramic coating onto an applicator pad, um, or you can spray it if you prefer. I prefer uh, kind of the old school way. Once the coating's on the, the applicator pad, basically just uh, cross hatching onto the paint. We let it flash cure briefly. Just level out with a couple different towels, just level out the, uh, the excess. It's noticeably slicker. Yeah, you can right see it with the a towel. To prep the car, you did something else, right? Yeah, so spray the car down after we've polished it. Usually we'll wash it again and then spray it down with isopropyl alcohol. I use uh, solvent to make sure that there's no waxes, sealants, any oils, or any fillers uh, from any of the polishes, um, just to make sure that the paint is essentially as virgin as possible so that the coating bonds to it. When you do the coating here, how much do you use per area? And how much? How do you know how much you use per um, area too? I mean, it depends on the applicator that you're using. So some have silk applicators, some have microfiber applicators, some have suede. It depends on which one you're using. Some you have bigger surface area, some you have less surface area, so you use, I mean, you're wasting less, I would say. I like to cover a larger area and get it done relatively efficiently. We'll go through maybe three quarters of a bottle on a car. An entire car? So. Yeah. Okay. And does color make a difference or no? Um, no. Okay. It won't make any difference. Got it. Okay, <clears throat> cool. So it's about eight o'clock. The sunset is very late now. There's not a, not much light. I just realized all these BMWs, man. 
got an M3, got an M2, M4, and this is gonna be my first time seeing the car. <laughs> oh my god. This paint looks absolutely insane. <laughs> Just get out and come look at it. Oh my gosh. Let me adjust my polarizer. <laughs> Dude, this is on a different level. I know you guys can't see much because it is a little bit darker out right now. But once we get this in the sun, you'll be able to see everything. It looks amazing. That's crazy. How insane is that, dude? And it's not even in the sun yet. It still looked good in the shape when it was obviously all messed up, but this is like a whole different level in person. And then obviously you're gonna show in the sun probably tomorrow morning. Yeah, I mean- and it's just gonna glow. It's unreal how crazy it looks in just the shade. Yeah. But when it gets in the sunlight, I'm sure it's gonna be a whole different car. Oh yeah. Cause right now you can just tell that like, the, the before on video when you would show the car, you would see uh, I would say like almost um, like a haze over the whole car yeah. in every video and it's hard to not not capture and now when you see it here it's like you were purposely like shooting in the shot in the shade yeah I would never shoot in direct sunlight yeah, but now you can <laughs> wow dude you killed this one thank you this is amazing bro How is it for you seeing it in person now? It's really cool and it, I mean, it really shows that the prices of these services are really worth it um, because of how much time goes into it. It's not even the products that are expensive, it's the labor, like, and the knowledge behind it. Every high, high-end detailer really knows what they're doing and they have years and years of knowledge and studying behind it. And they have to have that because this is like a sensitive kind of service yeah. where if you make any wrong move, you can cause damage. Exactly. But if you do it properly, you get cars that come out like this, which is yeah. insane. And yeah, if you're working on a crazy GT2 RS or something, then it's even more important because any, any repainted panel like that devalues the resale value of it. So it's crazy to see finally. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's not it's not Are these just some final touch-ups? Yeah, just making sure there's no like weird high spotting or anything like that. Because it's, it's weird how much it changes from the lighting in there to like LEDs to kind of dusk and yeah. direct sunlight. So you may not catch something that is in different lighting? Yeah, so typically what we'll do for just in case there is any sort of high spot, um, we always have customers come back a week later uh, for the first maintenance wash for free. You don't want to be washing the car for the first week anyhow. So. Um, oh, so I, sh I shouldn't wash this for a week? Correct. Okay. Cool, I didn't know that. Give it the full curing time and then you're good to go. Thank you again, dude. I appreciate it. So as you guys just saw, that was quite the experience. Uh, what I'm gonna do is show you guys tomorrow the car in the sunlight and then also have some cool stuff planned later on for a podcast to come back here and sit down with the owner and go over the whole process, what we did to my car in full detail. So if you wanna check out my podcast, it's just cars and business and life. It's uh, been really fun. We're on episode 31 if you wanna check it out. So I'm gonna go take this home and then I'll catch up with you guys tomorrow at the office. I hope the audio is okay, uh, but we're out here at my office and it is currently sunny as you can see over in Irvine. And I do have to apologize because it's actually been a week and one day from the last clip you guys just watched. I haven't washed the car yet, but it stayed the cleanest I've ever seen it. Um, I do have my new headlights, they just came in today and my reflector is being wrapped tomorrow and the front bumper is being resprayed in a couple weeks. But on camera, and from a few feet away, you really can't see that there's a layer of dust on the car just from daily driving it. But the cool thing is, there's zero of that haze that I talked about earlier in the video, and there's no more halos or swirls. So if you look at the paint, even with a small layer of dust and dirt on it, 
you can still see it's like a mirror. I do park in covered parking, but obviously the car still gets dirty. This is my favorite side just because that reflector is black, but. So I figured I would just do a quick walk around. The next video, I'm actually gonna go back for the maintenance wash. If you look at the bumper, look at that. It's like a mirror. I've driven the car for a week without washing it. And you can see, look at the reflection. Just unreal, dude. The only thing that I've learned so far is the fingerprints really stick on this car. So around my door and around my trunk too. I don't mean to, but it seems like it picks up a lot more oil because I guess it's just that's the paint now. There's no more like crazy layer of stuff on top of it. But the one thing I haven't done yet is the hydrophobic test. I wanted to wait for Austin and go in the, to do the maintenance wash, but I can't. I want to just see what it looks like right now. Let's see, where should I do this? I'm gonna do it on the hood. Oh, oh my God, look at that. Look at how hydrophobic this is. So if you don't know what hydrophobic is, it means that there's a layer from the ceramic coating on the car that doesn't allow anything to stick to it. Look at this. <laughs> how is that real? Wow, that is, it looks like it's a computer glitch or something. That's not real. Okay, just made a few TikTok videos. I'm gonna go, uh, I'm gonna jump inside real quick and talk to you guys for a sec. So I wanna say a big thank you to Austin. That was such an experience of learning and watching and just overall seeing what paint correction and ceramic coatings are all about. Uh, that was very special to me. So thank you again to Austin. Um, if you're in Southern California or you wanna ship your car to him, Austin does all of this for a very reasonable price on any colored car, any car out there really. And you're gonna see a big difference. Uh, the ceramic coating is so cool. The paint looks 10 times better on this car. Keep in mind, um, this car does have 80,000 miles. I do drive this every single day, and I drove to Florida and back. So the paint is not perfect, but for a daily driver, I'm very happy with how it looks now. So I think with that being said, I'm gonna go enjoy my car now at car shows without being embarrassed about the paint and show it off more in my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I need to go get a haircut. If you guys can, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.